Hi, my name's Dr. Paul Dignan, and I'm an outcomes and evaluation expert, and I'm talking here about how to develop performance indicators using a visual approach. And this is a new approach, the way we, we think about and visualize and work with a set of performance indicators. The traditional approach um, is to develop a list of indicators, and they may be called different things. People may call them uh, indicators, monitoring indicators, tracking indicators for a program, key performance indicators, sometimes summarized as KPIs. But whatever people call them, um, traditionally people have tended to start from the point of view of developing a list of these things, putting them into the table and then looking at them as a way of evaluating and monitoring in particular whether a program is on track. What we're doing when we're doing that is that we're immediately jumping to measurement. We're jumping to the stage of measuring what we're doing in a program, but uh, we haven't, or haven't at the start, prior to moving immediately to measurement, we haven't yet worked out what it is that we're trying to do. And it's that second approach uh, which I'm suggesting in this presentation. Because what normally happens once we have our little list of indicators is we take them to a meeting of stakeholders and we put them in front of them and the stakeholders look at them, they eyeball them, look at them up and down, and we ask the question, is this a good list of indicators or is it not? And usually people in the room nod, nod their heads sagely as to whether or not they think it is, and they normally say, yes, it looks pretty good. But what's actually happening in that room is each person is having to uh, construct in their own mind their own mental model of the program, and then in effect map that list of indicators back onto that mental model so they can work out whether or not it is, in fact, a good list of outcomes to use, um, indicators to use for the program. And now that's actually a really somewhat complicated thing to do um, for people to do that in their heads. And when we have a whole group of people in a room all doing it in different ways, it's almost certainly a recipe for confusion. And that's why people find working with indicators often so difficult. The new approach is to uh, build the indicator list uh, but as a secondary stage, the second stage in a two-stage approach. The first stage is to build a visual model of what it is that you're trying to do in a program, and secondly, map your indicators back onto that model. So what I'm going to do now is, is show you a little model. Here it's drawn in DoView Outcomes and Evaluation Software, and I'm going to um, draw, the, I've drawn this model already, as you can see. And this is a little model which is about a smoking reduction, and it's a, the individual level um, uh, of an outcomes model or program logic model around reducing smoking. You can see at the bottom we have a media campaign designed, and we move up through the project to the media campaign introduced, and pamphlets and posters, and then change attitudes towards smoking, and more knowledge about the hazards of smoking, etc., up to reduce smoking. What I'm doing now is I'm inserting an indicator here for the media campaign designed, and that could be something like uh, media plan developed and successfully peer reviewed. And then, as you can see, what I'm doing now is I have now inserted uh, onto the model uh, a range of indicators that the media campaign is run, the pamphlets prepared, and there's an indicator here about attitudes towards smoking are changing and one about knowledge and hazards of smoking. And as you can see from this, what I'm now doing is clicking on that indicator, and there we're looking at a graph, it's a JPEG, which I've thrown into the um, DoView software here, of how attitudes towards smoking are changing over time. And then we're right up at the top with smoking rates, uh, which is related to the outcome reduced smoking. What we can see immediately from this is because we've mapped these indicators back onto the visual model that there are two outcomes there that could be very, or steps, whatever you want to call them, which could be really important, which have no indicators. So there's organizational policies on smoking and peer pressure to stop smoking currently have no indicators. So this approach immediately alerts us in a way that it doesn't if we just had a straight visual approach to the indicators. And I'll show you now, we're clicking here on a page which just lists the indicators, the normal traditional list of indicators. Just looking at that list gives you no idea of whether or not they're measuring the important. Now moving back to the visual model, we can clearly see the two uh, steps within the model which don't have indicators 
and we can consider or not whether we should develop indicators for them. In addition to just using this to identify our, which indicators are priorities, if we use this approach in strategic planning, it means that um, those who char are charged with making decisions about the program are always aware of the steps in the model. They are not uh, fooled by the fact that just because they, they can't measure something at the moment, um, it's not brought into the strategic planning discussions. So this approach to developing a set of performance indicators both lets us be clear about what we are and what we're not measuring, and it also can be used in strategic planning to make sure that decision makers continue to be aware not only of what we can measure, but of what is the strategically important. So I hope those uh, ideas about how we can use a visual approach to performance indicators uh, are useful in your work.